Hi everyone, welcome back to Lecture 10i of Useful Genetics, where we're going to think about the consequences of chromosome rearrangements. In the list, this lecture, the consequences for chromosome function, and in the next lecture, the consequences for producing gametes and for the functions of genes. So we'll talk about what does a functional chromosome need and how these needs are affected by chromosome rearrangements of different kinds. So the first thing that a functional chromosome needs is it needs to be able to be replicated, and that means it needs many signals for starting DNA replication. Usually chromosomes have uh, several hundred of these what are called ORI sequences, ORI for origin of DNA replication. These are places where DNA replication starts. And it starts at many places on a chromosome at once because otherwise it would just take far too long to replicate such long molecules. Usually, the presence of ORI sequences isn't a big problem for chromosome rearrangements because there are so many of them on each chromosome. Centromere sequences are the opposite. Every chromosome only has one, and it must have one. Centromere sequences, you'll remember, are the places where the kinetochores form in mitosis and meiosis, and these kinetochores are the structures that the spindle fibers attach to to pull the centromeres to the poles, to pull the chromosomes to the poles of the cell. Um, if a, cro a chromosome lacking a centromere is non-functional, although rarely um, new sequences can arise by mutation that can at least partially function as centromeres and gradually be selected for improved centromere function. Finally, all chromosomes need special sequences at their ends to allow the ends to be replicated. And that's because DNA polymerase can't start replicating without a primer, a sequence with a three prime end that it can add nucleotides onto. And these sequences aren't available at the ends of molecules. And so chromosomes have special repeated sequences called telomeres um, consisting of, uh, for our telomeres, uh, seven nucleotide, six nucleotide repeat that's present in several hundred to more than a thousand copies. And that repeat folds back on itself and acts as a primer to allow the ends to be replicated. The need to have telomeres at the ends is probably the reason that cells go to such efforts to join broken ends back together, even risking joining them to the wrong ends rather than leaving them unrepaired because those raw ends without telomeres are a big problem for the cell because they can't be replicated. So here's a question. Here's two chromosomes that have each been broken. How many of these fragments can function as chromosomes as they are? And the answer is, well, none of them can function as chromosomes. Um, this one and this one have a broken end and they have no centromere. These two have centromeres, but they still have one end that is not a telomere, and so they can't function. Second question. Take the same chromosomes. How many different functional chromosomes can be assembled from these fragments? And assume that telomere ends are not broken ends and they won't be joined together by the end joining machinery. And the answer is there are four different chromosomes that can be formed. Two can be formed by putting the original molecules back together. And two can be formed by putting them together in the wrong combinations, joining this one to that one and this one to that one. Those would all be functional chromosomes. They'd have two telomeres and one centromere. Now, I've only shown you a couple of examples. Whether the outcome of some sort of rearrangement event is going to produce a functional chromosome is going to depend on a number of factors, on whether the change involved one DNA molecule or two sister chromatids or homologous chromosomes or chromatids, or whether it involved non-homologous chromosomes or chromatids. 
And I'm not going to take the time to work through all of these here, but you can work them out for yourself, and you should be prepared to consider them on quizzes and exams. So we've considered what kind of sequences do functional chromosomes need, and we've considered how rearrangements can create either functional or non-functional chromosomes. Coming up next, we're going to think about the consequences of these arrangements for two special kinds of, of function, for the ability to go through meiosis normally, and the effects on the actual function of genes that span the places where breaks and, re and rejoining happens. I hope to see you there.